Okay, class, what we're talking about now is cerebral spinal fluid and also the brain ventricles that the fluid is made in. The brain ventricles are spaces virtually in the center of the brain where cerebral spinal fluid is formed as an ultrafiltrate of the blood. What we will see is, is that here would be a blood vessel. Here are some cells that line right there called ependable cells. Okay, ependable cells. Now, um, we brought these up before. When we did the nervous system, we said that there were some neuroglial cells. We said microglia, ependema, astrocytes, and oligodendrocytes in the central nervous system. And we said these ependable cells line certain things. And what they line are these ventricles we're going to show. And I'm going to bring this picture back up again. So to make cerebral spinal fluid, here's the blood and that an ultrafiltrate of the blood, that means leave the cells and leave many of the proteins, seeps through these cells. As it seeps through these cells, these cells modify it, modify it, and they're going to put it in a space. They're going to put it in a space, which would be a ventricle. So the fluid would be a modified filtrate of the blood. That's how you get your, quote, cerebral spinal fluid. Okay, we're going to come back to it again, just trying to get you get you lined up here. All right, now, if we look at what the cerebrospinal fluid does, one thing it does is prevents the brain from crushing under its own weight. Now, what does that mean? You see right here, the brain is sitting down on the floor. The brain's not shown because we're showing that. Sitting down on the floor of the skull. Now, up in here, we would have some fluid, cerebral, because if the brain sat flat down on the hard floor of the skull, it would crush it because it would be too much weight. So the cerebrospinal fluid underneath here floats the brain, acts in a buoyancy fashion to keep the brain from falling straight down. It also protects the brain from blows and trauma because the cerebrospinal fluid around here, around here, in these areas here, around here, that cerebrospinal fluid around there, if you get hit in the head, it acts like a cushion inside. It's almost like, you know, how a football helmet has those cushions and some fluid sometimes. So when you hit, it doesn't, it kind of gives a buoyancy. Now, obviously, football is a bad example because the the blows are too hard, even for the fluid to handle, and even for the skull, the the uh, the uh, helmet to handle. That's why you get these traumatic brain injuries in football. But anyway, it's an attempt under usual circumstances. Football, as you know, is taking it to the extreme. It also nourishes the brains and carries chemical signals through it. Nourishes in that. It would nourish the neurons because it's got glucose in there and some other things that the brain can use for, for uh, the neurons can use for energy. And also it's where you carry chemical signals like hormones through as far as they would be coming from the brain. Okay, so that kind of gives you an idea. Now, we keep talking about where it's being produced there. So now we're ready to introduce the ventricles of the brain, the ventricles of the brain. Okay which I told you there were these spaces in the brain, these ventricles in the brain, okay? So that's what we're looking at. Okay, as we look at the ventricles of the brain, let's go here, okay? So here's the ventricles. These ventricles are paired C-shaped lateral ventricles. These are what we call the lateral ventricles, the lateral ventricles, which would be these here. The third ventricle, so these lateral is two of them, ventricle one and two. Now, we don't put a number, say it's the left one, another two. No, we just say the two. So then from the from these two, this one is a third ventricle, known as the third ventricle here. So this would be the first two, the third. And then we have one more, which we call the fourth ventricle. Now, these two here are in more of the, uh, in the area of the brain, 
within this side here. Let me see if I can't point it out to you here. Here would be these right here. That's those lateral, looking at a side view of those lateral ventricles. Okay. If I looked at a picture view, that would be these right here. Okay, now I'm coming back. So what we have are these paired ventricles. Let me find the picture again. Okay, C-shaped, third, and then a fourth. That third ventricle is around the area of the diencephalon. That's where the basal ganglia and so forth would be. And then that fourth ventricle is kind of in the hind brain back in this area there. All right, so here's kind of the deal as we proceed. The fluid is made in the walls of these ventricles, all four ventricles, the cerebrospinal fluid. The fluid would be made in the wall, and then the fluid in the lateral ventricles would percolate down through something called the interventricular foramen. Foramen means hole into the third ventricle. But however, the third ventricle wall makes its own fluid too. So the third ventricle would have the fluid from these two plus what it makes. Then the, then it would go down here through the cerebral aqueduct, also called the aqueduct of Sylvius, into the fourth ventricle. From the fourth ventricle, it then would go down here, it would go in that central canal inside the hole in the spinal, that central canal, but it also will float around this, and I'm going to show you in a moment, it'll float around through these apertures here. So, so you have to do 3D. These apertures carry me laterally, and then one would come straight back. All right, so we're going to do it again. So I'm just showing you how the flow is, the flow is. Okay. So we'll go to this picture here again, one more time, that these, these choroid plexus would be in the walls of the ventricles. Now I'm going to come to this picture. That's the choroid plexus right there. That's the choroid plexus. And each of these, that where that red is, has one. It would be in the lateral ventricles, so that would be this, they're kind of showing and in the third, and in the fourth, all making that cerebrospinal fluid as an ultrafiltrate of the blood. All right, so here, this is kind of, I'm going to do this one first, and then we're going to do the other one that I have. Okay, so we're now blowing up how this floats. Okay, so the lat we're going to start here. The lateral ventricles would then produce the fluid. It would then flow through that interventricular foramen. Through that, it would then go to the third ventricle. It would then go to the third. The third would add what it has. Okay. Then it would go through the cerebral aqueduct into the fourth ventricle. From the fourth ventricle, then it would go laterally. It would go both on a lateral aspect and an anterior, posterior aspect to go around the brain, see that's how it's getting around the brain, because it's being made here, and down the spinal cord in the subarachnoid space, plus a tad in the central canal. Now that amount in the central canal doesn't do much, but it does act to nourish cells right around the central canal. But the ones going down here in the subarachnoid space, remember the spinal tap, it floats the cord. Remember we said that the cord is protected from hitting the bone, because of the fluid, the denticulate ligaments, remember that you had, and the phylum terminale. Go back and study, go back and study to keep the, the, those car from not hitting. So, so then what's going to happen is, now here's, here's the ticket, listen to me. The fluid is made from the blood and returns to the blood. The fluid is made from the blood and returns to the blood. So the way it returns to the blood is in something called the arachnoid villi. I'm going to come back up here to this picture. Right here, you remember this right here? Separation. To, that's a big vein. That particular big vein, that particular big vein right here is called the superior sagittal sinus. This right here is a protrusion of the subarachnoid space through the dura mater into this big vein. The subarachnoid space through this big, through the dura mater into here. So the fluid in the subarachnoid space that would have been floating around, 
goes into this. These are arachnoid villi. Arachnoid means that it's part of the arachnoid, subarachnoid space, the spider, but it's little fingers, villi. And then the fluid leaks from here, that cerebral, into the vein, into this big vein. So the fluid was made from the blood and returns to the blood. Let me say it again. The fluid was made from the blood and returns to the blood. All right. So that's why this is saying, that's why this, let me find my flow route. Where's my flow route again that I was using? And I don't want to use that one later. That's why right here, the arachnoid villi in the dural venous sinuses, See, that's right. that is right there. That's that dural venous sinuses, because it's between the dura. Gets into the venous blood, and then once it gets in the vein, this AP2, then it's going to go through the circulation, go through the heart and lungs, and then finally from the heart and lungs be pumped into the arterial side, and look what happens. Then some of it goes into the wall of the fourth ventricle, where, ladies and gentlemen, in the art arteries of the choroid plexus, which are in the walls of that, so you see what I'm saying? It goes into that. Then some will go will be ultrafiltrated into the third ventricle and some ultrafiltrated. So it started from the blood and returns to the blood. It started from the blood and returns to the blood. It's an ultrafiltrate of the blood. So we go here. Here's another, here's another flow route real quick. CSF is produced about 500 milliliters per day in the adult by the choroid plexus in all four ventricles, the two laterals, the third and fourth. The typical description of flow is the lateral ventricles through the, okay, through the intravenous, uh, intraventricular, IV stands for intraventricular for Raymond or Moreau. Remember eponyms named after a person? Monroe described that, that intraventricular for Raymond. Then to the third ventricle. Then from the third ventricle through the cerebral aqueduct. Cerebral aqueduct, which they don't show. Other name for it is the aqueduct of Silvius, another eponym. To the fourth ventricle. You pick up some more. You picked up some there. Then it exits through the foramen magendi. That's the lateral. That's the, I'm talking about the, uh, the, the lateral, and then the foramen of Lusca goes lateral. Foramen of Lusca goes lateral. Foramen of magendi goes front and back. So that allows it then to get out to go around here and down the cord and some in the central canal. Then what will happen, it'll be, the fluid is reabsorbed by the venous sinuses, those arachnoid villi I showed you, via the arachnoid granulations, and then in the superior sagittal sinus, let's go here, superior sagittal sinus, right there, and then it's returned to the blood. So it's made from the blood and what returns to the blood. But along its way, it does what it does, what we said it did. Okay, now, let's just look at a couple of pathology things. Something called hydrocephalus. Some will call it the water brain. Hydrocephalus is when the fluid cannot be cleared adequately. Sometimes they're, they're pro they can be communicating or non-communicating. But anyway, hydrocephalus, water on the brain, that's kind of, and the skull gets big. So in this picture here, just to show you, see, that's a normal. But if this fluid starts building up and for some reason it can't go through these ducts or whatever, then it would push, the, these, these ventricles would get big and push the brain against the skull. Do what? Push the brain against the skull. Now the skull ain't gonna, the skull will come out some, but it ain't going to come out much. But it, before it comes out, it's going to push on the brain tissue, which would cause the kid to lose part of brain tissue. Then it pushes on the skull. The head will get big. The head will get big. But it's going to damage a lot of the brain before the head gets big because it's pushing out on this deal. See, that's what you're looking at. So what do we have to do in order to clear of the obstructions, that's where you do a shunt. You put a tube in and you shunt it into the peri into the cavity in the chest. That's a shunt deal. I'm, that's just showing you how it is. You don't shunt it down. You go straight into that. And so that's what the surgeons, the uh, pediatric neurosurgeons do, is to try to alleviate that. All right, so that kind of gives you an idea. We'll close here on cerebral smile.